Welcome to DXB today. On the show tonight, we are celebrating homegrown regional storytelling with a focus on all things film and TV production. Plus, the part that I'm most excited about, we have the breakout star of the Netflix TV show, the Indian period drama, Hira Mundi on the show to tell us a little bit more about his journey since his stardom. Let's find out what else is coming up on the show. Paris caught up with renowned actor Steve Toussaint for an exclusive interview down at the regional premiere of House of the Dragon season two. And the acoustic rock band April joins us right here in the studio. Of course, today we have an amazing lineup of guests, but like the show that's on everyone's lips, Hira Mandi, Taha Shah is joining us right here in the studio. How's that, guys? Very exciting. The funny thing is, I'm the only Indian here on the panel. I'm <laughs> sitting with two Emiratis, yet you guys are so up to date with Bollywood. I'm very impressed. Do you enjoy the show, Meitha? Well, I loved it so much because I'm a big fan of Sanjay Leela Bansali. Yeah. So I've loved all his productions. And when I finally found out there was a web series for him on Netflix, I was like, I have to binge it. I actually had a alert button from the get go. So wow. when it came, I just binged it and watched it. You know, as we mentioned a little bit earlier on, there's a focus on all things homegrown yes. on the show today, particularly with regard to film and TV production. Exactly. I don't know about you. I mean, you guys, much like I am, we're in the same industry. I have been doing this job since I was 21 years old, but my, most of my experience is very much being in front of the camera. But yes. the two of you, uh, a lot of your experience has predominantly been behind the camera. So I'm sure you agree with me that the media scene in the UAE has been on a slow and steady rise. But before anything else, I believe congratulations is in order for my very, very dear colleague, Maytha, who's just had her directorial debut. Maytha, why are you being so humble about this? <laughs> I, I, I really loved the whole experience and I wanted to share it with everyone when, once everything came out. So I just became a bit hush-hush until that happened. You're officially a movie director. How exciting. It's, it was a long journey coming, but I'm so grateful for this opportunity and I'm so grateful for the UAE for expanding their film yeah. reach. And we're seeing more and more homegrown talent coming out. Exactly. Like so many people getting into this field, which is nice because we need more Emirati directors just like you. But also, let's see who is our next co-host in the studio. Hi, I'm Amr Bati, the executive director at the Dubai Film and TV Commission. And I'm really excited to see you a little later on the show. Amar will join us right here in a little bit, but first, from new season insights to the latest ventures, we find out what the talented star Steve Toussaint has been up to with Faris down at the OSN Plus screening of House of the Dragon at Jarmair Zabia Sarai. Take a look. We are very excited. It's back, House of the Dragon, season two, June 17th on OSN Plus, and I'm sat here with none other than the sea snake. It's Steve Toussaint. Thank you so much for being on DXP today. Wonderful. Thank you for inviting me. I'm so excited to be here. And before we get into House of the Dragon, I want to ask about Dubai. How many times have you been here? Are you loving it so far? It's very hot. I feel bad that you came at this time of year. No, yeah, yeah, this is my first time. I am enjoying what I've seen of it. It is very, very hot. I've been told I should come back around sort of December-ish. Please come back. So I will do that. Then. Yeah, but I'm enjoying it so far. It's lovely. What managed to do in the city so far? So we did the, uh, oh my goodness, it's called the Burj. Yes. We did that. That was amazing um, to see, because I don't think I've ever been up that high except in a plane. Um, so that was extraordinary. And then to hear the history of it, that I think it was built in like six years or something. It was built in a very short amount of time. It's That's, very impressive. It's embarrassing. It puts the rest of us to shame. Yeah, I mean, speaking of amazing wonders, we're sat on one right now. We're on the Palm Jumeirah island in the shape of a palm tree. Uh, how, Brilliant. What's it like landing in a, in a city like this and just seeing all the tall buildings, seeing all the craziness? It's extraordinary because I thought that uh, the very first time I ever went to New York was, I mean, I was like 19 or 20. I was stunned by that. I spent a lot of it just doing it. I feel like I'm doing that here. And also the fact that there are so many developments. It's like a, such a vibrant and growing city. Uh, you, you live here, right? I do live here. Yes. It must be a joy to live here. It's I an presume. absolute joy. The convenience, yeah. the safety, all that stuff. And we're very happy to have you here. We hope it's going to make you come back. It has. Uh, but we do have to talk about House of the Dragon. Not Let's just do that. Uh, so season one, obviously, uh, a lot of intrigue, a lot of betrayal, mm -hmm. a lot of incest. Uh, I want to know, is season two going to go in a different direction? Because obviously the banners have been lit and dragons are dancing. Is it going to be a lot bloody? Is it going to be a lot more action? I think yes. I think what we're trying to do, what we try to do, um, is 
because we spent a lot of time scene setting in, in season one and also getting people to understand and know and, and hopefully like the characters so that when they do lose their lives or loved ones, it, it hits that much harder. And I think a lot of season two is about preparation for war. There are battles. This is Westeros. You're going to lose people that you love. So that does happen. Um, there is a lot of bloodshed. I mean, even I watched uh, episode one the other day and even I, I'm in it. And I watched it and was like, oh, I can't believe they did that. Do you know what I mean? So I won't say what that is. You can wait and discover that for yourself. But yes, I think it, what we, we realized that with how much people loved season one, we had to at least, if not equal, we had to raise the bar. And I think we have. Now, we were mentioning the heat of Dubai. And I imagine, is it worse or is it easier than the heat under that wig? I think there were maybe two days in shooting in season one when I was like, oh my God, this is ridiculous, too hot. And that was, I think, there was a scene when we were all pledging allegiance to the new Princess Rhaenyra, because that was a, a hall where we had lots of naked flame, about two or three hundred um, supporting artists, no air conditioning, and then you got the wig on. Uh, that was a tough one, but generally uh, the wig is its not as heavy as it seems, not as, as thick as it seems. I hardly ever notice sometimes. Oh, excellent. Well, I have one more question for you now. Uh, I know a lot of people probably have asked you, which team should we support? Team Black, Team Green. What I'm going to ask you is, can you tell us why we should support Team Green? I know you represent Team Black, so and I love Team Black. I'm, I'm glad. Team Black. I'm glad. Why should left. somebody, what's the argument for Team Green? What is the argument for Team Green? The argument for Team... Oh, it's wow. Uncomfortable that is question. such a hard question. <laughs> the argument for Team Green is that in, uh, oh gosh, in Alison, they have somebody who is not trying to hurtle towards war. She, she is a voice of reason in that house. And uh, green's a nice color. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Tassan, thank you so much for being on DXB today. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Faris, for that report. You know, I have only watched Game of Thrones. I still haven't watched House of Dragons, but I'm really fascinated with the whole show. Now, moving on, our co-host today is a presenter, producer, and the executive director at the Dubai Film and TV Commission. Having worked on everything from feature films to reality TV, he is a media expert in the global landscape. Please welcome to DXB today, Omar Butti. Omar, welcome back. Thank you very much, Ash. It's so nice to be here. Thank you guys for having me. You know, it's always exciting when uh, friends come on the show. And uh, I mean, you and I were colleagues. Uh, you know, we started off our career pretty much on this very channel. So, you know, it's an honor to have you back on the show, Omar. Honor is all mine. Speaking of TV production, I mean, we can see the trends that because of the Dubai's iconic skyline and the diverse landscapes, a lot of people are choosing to invest in Dubai as a hub for um, a lot of local TV production. Some of the notable projects that have been filmed here include Star Trek Beyond, Dune, which was recently done, Mission Impossible, Ghost uh, Protocol, uh, a project that you were a part of. How is that like and what is your general take on the production scene here in the UAE? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm biased, but I think the production scene here is fantastic, uh, particularly from the perspective of the quality of crew that we have here. I think um, we all know that, but when people come in uh, from outside, whether it's from Bollywood, Hollywood, from Europe, uh, I think they're constantly impressed by the quality of the production crew we have here. Uh, you find, I think, best in class uh, for anyone from a cinematographer to uh, your gaffer to your you know, uh, costume set designers, you'll find that here. And that's really grown. That's changed a lot since I worked on the, mm. the mission, first Mission Impossible, or the, the fourth one, rather, uh, when it first came here. Uh, at that point, they were just bringing everything in. We didn't have it here you know, in the city or in the country. Uh, they had to ship it over on, on, uh, on well, ships. Mm -hmm. uh, cranes, all the big equipment, none of that was here in, in, the, in the country. So that's really changed a lot. Uh, and that's, I think, a testament both to the quality of production, but the demand that we're seeing. Uh, and as you mentioned, like, we had things like Dune filmed here and Abu Dhabi, which was fantastic. Uh, Star Wars, you know, massive, massive franchises filmed here in the UAE. I wanted to ask you, being like an Marathi and a guy in this field, it was so hard for me, especially like when I first got into this field, I know my parents didn't really like it. But then afterwards, getting into it and doing all this work, then they see something out of it. How was it for you and how did you get into this field as well? It would be nice to know <laughs> your story for uh, Marathi out there. Sure. Um, <laughs> Well, look, you know, I'm uh, I'm a little older, uh, so you know, when I uh, first said, "Oh, I want to study," you know, media, 
uh, the reaction was maybe as you might expect, right? Which was, media, why do you want to study media? Especially, because uh, I'm like, but you're, you're good in school. You know, why would you study yes. media? You know, for, it's for the dummies. Right? I mean, it's just <laughs> terrible, right? And I think that's changed. Like, the people don't think that anymore, thank yeah. God. But uh, my family's like, well, you know what? Maybe you could be the minister of media, you know, wazir, you know? And that's, that's kind of like how they reconciled the whole situation. And then I went and I studied it in a degree and they saw that I came back and I worked here, you know, with Ash uh, in, on TV. And they saw me on television and they're like, oh, this is real, this is legitimate. Yes. Uh, and I think now it's much more uh, accepted, but still, it's still there. I think the more stuff is produced, the more mm -hmm. stories that are told, the more people sure. see um, their own stories, faces, characters reflected on screen, the more they're going to think it's legitimate, the more they're going to enjoy it, and the more they're going to be supportive of that. True, that's very true. And I, I agree with you because even I, when I went and studied filmmaking, my granny was like, I won't believe it until I see your name on a screen. <laughs> <laughs> so, but that being said, like DFTC has done so much right now with um, being involved in the filmmaking community and, and not only that, but also gearing them up to do not only local productions, but international, like the Ticket to Bollywood initiative that you had a few years back. Can you tell us what else has been cooking in the FTC right now? Sure. Well, I, I think that, um, you know, one thing we very much want to push when it comes to the, the Film Commission and just Dubai production in, in, in general is offering opportunities for anyone who is a resident here in uh, Dubai or the UAE to tell their story. So when we talk about local stories, local production, local films or series, we're not talking just about Emirati stories, although that is of course very important. We're very passionate about that too. We're talking about all the 200 plus nationalities that are based here, uh, whether you're you know, originally from the Philippines or from India or from Russia, that you have the opportunity to express your own unique experience mm -hmm. of being a part of the very rich community that we have in the United Arab Emirates. And we're hoping to see more of those stories because if you're looking at just the Emirati market, it's quite small, yes. right? It's uh, very modest in terms of the people you can reach. Uh, there's this important, we need to be telling those stories, and we want to get them to the world. But really, what you want to target a global audience. Even if you're producing local stories, you want those stories to travel. Mm -hmm. And we've seen that, you know, when it comes to things on Netflix, um, you know, languages, you have Korean shows and Spanish shows yes. that are global sensations, right? And I think we can do the same thing, whether it's in Arabic language, Tagalog, Farsi, whatever it is, but based out of the UAE. Uh, and so we've been looking more at getting stories that are produced here, told here, but not necessarily specifically um, Emirati only stories. And okay. I'm sort of hoping to find ways to uh, make the connections between the creatives and the people who will finance that. We are definitely seeing the government put in a significant investment towards the media infrastructure over here, attracting um, international media companies, nurturing a lot of the local talent as well. So for international brands who are looking to come here and film in the city, are you the go-to guy to get in touch with? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sure, why not? Why not? That's, uh, and the absolutely. number is on your television. Yeah, yeah the numbers are now, my number, my personal email, my home address, just, you know, yeah. bother me. No, genuinely though, absolutely they should bother me. Uh, I very much want to offer opportunities to anybody coming in. Uh, I'm always delighted to connect people from all over the world. We've recently had people coming from Korea, which has been a new market for us, mm. which is really exciting. Um, and I think, I don't know, do any of you watch K-drama? Okay. I used to, a lot. I mean, a lot of people do, right? I mean, I was surprised my mother does, right? And, uh, so, and she never used to before, so obviously it's, you know, it's, it's, it's huge. Um, but, you know, we, yes, I very much want to be that point of contact for you. Uh, and wherever you're coming from, uh, we'd love to have more production. We have a lot actually coming from Bollywood in particular. Mm -hmm. It's probably our, our biggest in terms of like large scale um, markets, uh, a, a biggest destination. Or, but uh, we'd love to, to get more people from all over the world. I like that. Well, Amar, we still have a lot to talk about in today's episode. But coming up, find out how an award-winning film and entertainment company is helping us break boundaries in the region of media. Let's take a look at Image Nation after this break. <laughs> 